Hey guys, right now I'm going to show you how to do a hydrogen peroxide swab on your fish. If you have a fish that has a sore from sitting on the bottom or if it's a floater and it's belly up and it's, its belly is irritated from touching the air, it's sometimes good to just do one dab of hydrogen peroxide on the wounded area. You don't want to do more than one because it actually kills the surface cells, so if you one is good because it'll kill the surface cells that are irritating and bad, um, but you don't want to do a second swab because that will kill the healthy cells that are regrowing. So for this procedure you'll need a bucket. I'm just using a one gallon ice cream bucket. Make sure it's clean and has never been used for any chemicals or anything like that. Um, you'll need hydrogen peroxide. It's three percent Yep, hydrogen peroxide, 3%. And then a Q-tip or two. All right, so I got my fish in the bucket, and the water is filled almost to the top, but not quite, because when I put my hands in there, it's gonna raise the water level a little bit, and I don't want it to overflow. So what I do is open the hydrogen peroxide and pour a little bit in the cap just a little bit and then you can dip the q-tip in there and get some on the q-tip and then sometimes I dip one and I set it down and then I'll come and dip another one and set it down so they'll both um, have hydrogen peroxide on them and be ready to use when I need them so I'll just set that aside Oops. This particular fish, um, she's pretty healthy except she's developed a swim bladder problem, so she can't stay upright. As you see, she keeps tipping to the side, and it's the constant bottom sitting is causing some irritation on her fins and her side where she contacts the bottom, so I'm just going to do a hydrogen peroxide dip, and then I bought a plastic colander that I'm going to use to float her in the pond so she doesn't sit on the bottom anymore. So you just carefully grab the fish and expose the problem area. Her problem area is right there. And I usually hold them still and steadily for a few seconds until they stop thrashing. And try to position yourself so you can hold her gills underwater, but the problem area above water. It's right there. So I'm just going to swab it. Try to go along with the scales. Don't go against the scales. You might pull some out. Her gills are still mostly underwater. So she's fine. That's probably plenty. So then I'm just going to hold her like this for a little while. Okay, she's had enough, so I'll let her go. Once the fish is underwater, you should be able to see tiny, tiny bubbles forming along the area that you swabbed with hydrogen peroxide. That's a good sign, it just means it worked. And I think I'm going to try and dab a little bit on her fins that look ragged as well without stressing her too much here. Just again I'm just holding her so that the problem area is out of the water but not her gills. And I'll just swab it on that fin right there because it's a little ragged. And hold it for a little while. And then I'll just quickly do a light swab on the edges of this fin. That's good. So, hopefully that will help. And that's just a, a band-aid for the problem, but what will really address the underlying issue is floating her in the colander. So that way she won't be resting on the bottom and these sores will have a chance to heal. So here she is floating in her colander in the in the this is actually my plywood tub pond. 
Um, she's floating in. And I think this is going to work out really well for her. She already seems a little bit happier than she was. And this way, well, the other fish weren't picking at her at all, but if they were ever inclined to do so, they won't be able to now. And she's up off the bottom. This colander I can easily wipe off every day to make sure that no germs accumulate too much that would irritate her skin, her scales anymore. So I think this will be good. This is a good solution.